Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use internal and external libraries in Adobe Flash CS5. In this tutorial I will be covering what a library is as well as how to access internal and external libraries. With that stated we can now start the tutorial. For this tutorial it will not matter what type of project file we use. However I'm going to use an ActionScript 3.0. You select a project file by hovering your cursor over the name of the project file and selecting it with your left mouse button. Once your project file has been created, you will be taken to the appropriate workspace of that project file. For this tutorial, I will be using the workspace Essentials. If you are not in the Essentials workspace, please go up to Windows, to, down to Workspace, and hover over to Essentials. Adobe Flash CS5 will now refresh and the current workspace will appear. If your Essentials workspace still doesn't look exactly like mine, please go up to Windows, go down to Workspace again, and go all the way down to Reset Essentials and select it. Once again, Adobe Flash CS5 will refresh itself. Your workspace shall now look like mine. With our workspace now set up, we can begin with internal libraries. Internal libraries are beneficial to users because they hold all sound bites, symbols, video clips, and photo images that the user imports or creates in the current project file. So the easiest way to access an internal library is to go up to by the properties panel and select the tab to the right of the properties panel that has that says library. Select the tab with your left mouse button. Since your project file is brand new, your internal library should look like a tall rectangular gray box. Now items will add at the bottom half of the internal library when we import or create objects in our project file. These items will show up down here in this bottom half of the rectangular box. For example, let's import an audio file. To import a soundbite, we go up to File, down to Import, and you'd go to Import to Stage. You can also import to Stage by hitting Command R, or if you're on a PC, you'll hit Control R. Select Import to Stage now. A box will appear that says preparing to import. Now a bigger pop-up menu will appear. This bigger pop-up menu will allow you to choose any type of file on, that's saved on your computer or any external hard drives that you have attached to the computer. You can see here that You can see here that I have my folder called midterm selected up at the top and it contains two image files. Now however if I go to, let me find an image, okay, it has two image files. Now if we go down to my subfolder called midterm assignment resources, it will contain a folder called sounds. This is only for my computer. Your sound bites could be located anywhere on your computer that you originally saved them to. They could be in folders, in my music, any place that you saved your current sound files. I will now select my sound folder, which will bring up a bunch of MP3s and WAV files that I have saved into that subfolder. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose plain1.mp3. Adobe Flash, however, can take .wav files, as you can see I have in the subfolder. I'm just going to use an MP3 for this tutorial. If you would like me to use a .wav file, please comment below asking me how to import a .wav file. With my plain1.mp3 file selected, I will now go down to Open. I will select Open with my left mouse button. As soon as I select it Open on the bigger pop-up menu, you will notice that Plain1.mp3 
is now located on the bottom half of my internal library. So you can understand the full capability of internal libraries. I'm going to switch this project file over to a previously made project file that I have created for this tutorial. So right now I will save this project file by hitting Command S or if you're on a PC, Control S. Alright, so that's just an idea of, it's a basic animation, but it just shows the power of internal libraries. But those airplanes are actually three airplanes. They're on three separate layers down here. They are, they do look the exact same, but that's because I imported them again from the internal library and I didn't have to redraw these symbols. So let's go back in my timeline by grabbing the playhead. I'll go all the way back to the beginning. All right. All right, so now I will show you the different three planes. So here is one. This is the original one that I drew. So now if we go down to our timeline and drag our playhead, you will see the second green airplane. Once again, it will look identical to the original first one, but it's going to be on the right side of the canvas. So let's go down, grab our playhead. The plane flies across the ocean, uh, gets shot at, dodges the bullet, the missile. It's across. All right, there it goes. It goes out of the canvas. Goes, the yellow plane goes out of the canvas. Bam! Second yellow plane just shows up on the right side of the canvas. There's our green second plane on the outside of the canvas. It again flies into the canvas, shoots a missile, and tries to knock down the yellow plane. Flies, there it goes, flying left into the outside of the left side of the canvas. Once again, if we grab our plate head, scroll to the right, there's the third, ooh, sorry, a little fast. Once again, there's our third yellow plane, our third green plane, another missile. The missiles are again duplicates from the internal library. And uh, this time it looks like the yellow plane's unlucky, gets exploded, and crashes into the ocean. Slow motion, bam, into the ocean. And the third green plane flies to the right out of the canvas. So let's take a look at this internal library. You will notice it has multiple icons and different types of files with the names of each type of file. All of these symbols in the internal library are called assets. It doesn't matter if it's a sound bite, a photo image, a symbol, or a button, or a video clip. These are all called assets. All an asset is is, a, is like the book to the internal library. It's just what stores the colors, the shape, the the um, how the audio waves, everything. It just hold it holds everything. Like I said before, you can think of all of these like a book. Here's the book about the rock button I have down below, at the bottom right of my canvas. Now, if you go down here, it's more like if you bought something at a digital library, and it's music go down to this symbol it will show you like a picture book and show you pictures of the image that you used for your reference or background once you have added new assets into the internal library the way to add duplicates to the canvas is by creating multiple layers to create layers in Adobe Flash CS5 you go down to this bottom square this bottom left hand corner that has a, like a white square with a small gradient square next to it. You select it with your left mouse button and you will notice a new layer will appear. This, the layer should say layer and then a number. If it's your first layer that you ever created in this project file it will say layer 1. Since I saved it, closed it, and then reopened it for you guys, my layer is again saying layer 1. To rename the layer, double click on the layer. You'll notice that the name gets highlighted in a light blue. You delete the name layer 1 by hitting the delete key now. You can now delete the name layer 1 by hitting the delete key on your keyboard. 
you will now now you can type whatever the name of the layer is so I'm gonna name this green airplane 4 alright and I'll drag it up to the top so that way we can see it it won't be covered by any layers if we were going to continue on with this animation I created and wanted to add a fourth green airplane to the animation we would select our layer by left clicking on it the layer should now have a bluish uh, transparent line across it and go over to the internal library select where our symbol for the green layer in this case minus symbol one select it by hitting the left mouse button a, a preview of the asset should now appear in the top of the internal library if this is the item you want if this is the symbol you want simply go back down to the assets name and drag it over to the canvas the asset you dragged over from the internal library will now appear on the canvas once the symbol has been dragged over to the canvas it is now ready to be changed or animated the symbol the symbol of the asset is now on the layer that you created you could perform this task multiple times throughout your animation since Adobe Flash CS5 has no limits on how many times you could add assets from the internal library as you can see now using assets from the internal library helps animators use objects and characters over and over again without the need to redraw or trace a character or object from its original concept art well now with the understanding of how internal libraries and assets work we can now continue on to an external library external libraries are internal libraries from previous project files that has been imported into a foreign project file for this tutorial I will be importing these assets from this airplane fight project file into the original project file that we created at the beginning of this tutorial before we can import the internal library of this airplane fight project file into our originally made project file we must first close out this airplane fight project file by going up to the top left by selecting the close button with our left mouse pointer I will select no since I don't want to add a fourth plane to the small animation I created so don't save okay we are now back to the originally made project file that we created at the beginning of this tutorial you will notice that the plane1.mp3 asset is still here so now what we're gonna do is import the internal library of that of the airplane fight project file into this project files internal library to import an external library you go over to file in the top left hand corner and you go all the way down to import and go down to open external library select open internal library by selecting it with your left mouse button once open external library has been selected go over once once open external library has been selected a bigger pop-up menu will appear asking you to find the project file that contains the internal library that you wish to import alright so I'll go up to midterm assignment and go down to midterm airplane fight dot FLA dot FLA is the extension that Adobe Flash CS5 saves its project files as so since I want midterm airplane fight dot FLA I will select the project file with my left mouse button and go down to open and select open with my left mouse button you should now see a small window that contains the name library midterm airplane the small window contains all the assets that the midterm airplane fight project file had within it as you can see we can go down to symbol one select the asset and the symbol of our green airplane will appear now I can I can understand that this small window is hard to work in with so many assets so there are two ways to expand this small window one is to go down to the bottom right corner until your cursor changes into a diagonal double arrows 
and select it with your left mouse button and press on it with your left mouse button and drag your mouse to the bottom right of your pad or if you're using a trackpad like me go all the way to the bottom of your trackpad and this window will appear greater now the second way is to go up to the dark grayish bar at the top of the window and drag it all the way over next to the tab that says library and you'll notice that your internal library will now glow with a bright blue outline this means that Adobe Flash CS5 wants to add the external library as a tab next to the internal library and properties tabs so once your internal library is outlined in a bright blue box release your left mouse button All right, so all right, so now your external library has been added as a tab, just like your library and properties panel. So let's go back to the external library. You can now use all the assets from the imported project file into this newly created project file. Adobe Flash CS5 now treats this imported external library as a second internal library for the project file. Now this means now any symbols you create uh, that are now any symbols that you now any now anything you create in this project file will be saved under the first original internal library and not the second imported library. The second internal library will only contain the assets from the imported ex The second internal library will only contain the assets from the external library that you imported. Adobe All right, so now since we have Adobe Flash thinking that the second library is an internal library, we can now use it within our animations the same way that you use a normal internal library. With both libraries set up, we can now use assets from both libraries by creating new layers and dragging them over to the canvas with the correct layer selected. Well, with that said, that concludes this tutorial on how to use internal and external libraries in Adobe Flash CS5.